meeting. And before I get started, I have to do some housekeeping stuff here. Mr. Gatanis, uh, Priscilla... can we wait? I'm sorry, I, I, I gave you the false alarm. Could we just give it a moment as our attendees join? Mike just went oh, okay. live. Yep, no problem. So welcome to our attendees. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's good to have you with us. It's still populating, so we'll give it another another couple of moments as our guests um, join us tonight. Thank you for being here. All right, Mr. Katanas, it looks like we're good to go. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, uh, welcome everybody to our May regular board meeting. And I'll start off with this statement. Pursuant to board policy 1B5, all meetings of the Salisbury Township School District are audio and video recorded. The district disclaims any and all liability arising from the recordings of the meetings and for any statements made by those in attendance. And also we did have an executive session prior to this meeting, which includes uh, a legal and personnel items that cannot be uh, shared in public. So just want to mention that. And with that, um, I'd like to call this meeting to order and um, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, and to the and Republic of which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice and all wrong. Okay, thank you. That takes us to a roll call. Mr. Taylor, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, Mr. DeFrank. Here. Ms. Frick. Here. Mr. Katanis. Here. Ms. Flannister. Here. Mr. Denall. Here. Mr. Hanninger. Here. Ms. Klinger. Here. Ms. Nemitz. Here. And Ms. Igler. Here. And we have a quorum. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Okay, that takes us to the student representatives report, which is always my favorite part of the meeting. Um, and we'll be starting at the high school. Sierra Rausch, a 12th grade student there, will start off. Hi, I'm Sierra. Good evening, we'll be updating you on the Salisbury High School happenings. So we're gonna start with the athletics. And the first thing with our athletics is that spring sports seasons went smoothly and are coming to a close for most programs. So my name's Anna. I'll also be talking about the athletics. So boys tennis just finished their postseason in leagues and districts for singles and doubles. Baseball also just finished their season on Monday. And softball competed in their regular season and are awaiting their fate in their postseason as well. Track and field comp um, competed in the Colonial League meet yesterday and are preparing for districts next week. And then fall sports programs are holding some workouts and open sessions. Um, teams from the past years and past seasons are finally being able to like celebrate. So for example, basketball today had, or varsity and junior varsity basketball had their um, the so-called COVID safe banquet. Yeah, and we're also holding sports performance workouts several times a week for any interested athlete that isn't currently in another sport. There are separate sessions for male, female, and middle school athletes. And then for other like in-school occurrences, we have, um, instead of a traditional prom, Class of 2021 is having a senior farewell fest. Um, it's going to take place on May 22nd in our stadium from seven to 10. And it's gonna be $10 for tickets for any seniors watching tonight. And if you have any questions, contact Mrs. Basil. And then SGA is also holding our annual Powder Puff football event next Thursday, the 20th at the stadium. We're still accepting signups and from all interested participants from all years at the high school. So you can contact Janetta Johnson or Mr. Hahn for more information on that. Um, we're having a senior parade. Information was just sent out about that, and that's going to be Sunday, June 6th at 6.30 p.m. It's going to start at the middle school, and we're going to end at the South Mall. And if you have family members who want to celebrate with you, they can go anywhere in between and watch you guys drive through. So, and then the senior, sorry, and the senior yard signs were placed in the yards of the seniors this past week by SHS administration, faculty, and staff. 
Um, 2021 graduation ceremony is going to take place on Tuesday, or Tuesday June 8th, starting at 6 p.m. at the stadium. And moving on from that, Keystone testing is currently taking place and will continue for the next couple of weeks. Algebra is taking place currently as well, while literature and biology are coming up next. Also, AP testing is taking place, so good luck to all the students who went to this fall, or went to it this year. And then the Salisbury Wellness Committee is excited to announce their first Fit Falcon Challenge for students and staff. As the school year winds down, we want to encourage you to head into summer with some healthy habits by practicing mindfulness, making healthy choices, and getting some exercise. So you can join this by playing bingo to get started and have the chance to earn some amazing wellness prizes. And then the winners will be announced the first week of June. Our Give Club is holding a food drive to benefit the Hispanic Center of Lehigh Valley um, through May 26th. So they are accepting donations in the form of canned foods, pastas, rice, et cetera. If you have any questions, contact seniors Nevaeh Robinson and Lindsay Rapp or Misha Snyder for more information. Also, um, we wanted to touch on our future plans a little bit. So I'm going to be attending Widener University studying biology pre-med in hopes of becoming a physician's assistant. And then I'm going to Moravian College studying nursing and where I'll be continuing to play tennis as well. And also, if you guys have any questions about our school experiences or any more updates, we're open to answers. Danny, anybody have any questions for these two young ladies, Anna and Sierra? Uh, no, no? Questions, just a comment. Um, just wanted to um, thank you for your, you know, repeated appearances at our meetings this year and wishing you both uh, the best of luck as you continue your education. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. you had those sentiments. I'm sorry, Sam. Go ahead. Your endeavors there in school. Thank you for all your time. Thank you. Great. Uh, you ladies looking forward to graduation? Are you, you know, you're going to miss it or are you dreading it? You know, what, what, what are your thoughts? Um, I would say I have a little bit of mixed emotions, but the senioritis kicked in a couple of semesters ago. So um, I'm ready to graduate, but I am going to miss high school. I'm not going to lie. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with Sierra. It's going to be sentimental and I bet like I'm going to miss it a lot, but it's still exciting at the same time. Well, it's great that you guys have great plans ahead of you and good luck to you. And I can vouch for the senioritis kicking in in my house for sure, from my senior. And he was not happy to see the lawn sign up here on our lawn, but I was. So that was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, ladies. Okay. That takes us to uh, the middle school. And we have Olivia Cudd and Meredith Kelly. And... Uh, Olivia is going to be starting off. Um, hi, so um, my name's Olivia and um, I'm going to be going over a few of the um, new updates um, at Salisbury Middle School. And um, first, since there are PSSAs coming up, um, I think um, next week. Um, so we're excited to host a spirit week during the PSSAs during that PSA week and students will dress in themed attire for the week and with the corresponding inspirational saying, um, don't sweat the test, put your game face on, put your thinking cap on, we're all in this together and you are bright, you got this. Um, so each um, day is gonna be saying, uh, is gonna be, we're gonna be dressing a little bit differently. So Monday is wearing comfy clothes and that goes with don't sweat the test. Um, Tuesday is sports and uniform day, and that goes with put your game face on. Wednesday is hat day, which um, is put your thinking cap on. Um, Thursday is blue and white day, and that stands for we're all in this together. And finally, um, Friday is bright colors day, and um, it stands for you are bright and you, and you got this. Um, I actually made a poster for um, Spirit Week. Um, in the hall in the middle school um and i put all the um all the days and what we're going to be wearing for those days so um that's very exciting okay great so olivia are you looking forward to the summer or do you like it better in school or do you like the summers better just curious um 
I'm looking forward to the summer. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, thank you. That was Olivia Kud, and now that takes us to Meredith Kelly, uh, another seventh grader at Salisbury Middle School. Hi, so in addition to what Livy was saying, um, we are working on coordinating an end of the year field day for the middle school students. We've held field days in the past, but as you can probably imagine, there are new logistics and complications that we have to work through due to COVID. We hope to update you in the near future once we have more details about that. We are also having several students work on creating a both digital and hard copy book of SMS building locations and staff members. And we plan to share these with the fourth grade students that are coming to fifth grade so they can see a map of the buildings with the special locations and some staff pictures so they'll feel welcome and confident when they come to the middle school. Great. Thank you, Meredith. That was Olivia Cud and uh, Meredith Kelly, both um, uh, seventh grade. I'm sorry. Um, I actually have one more thing to add um, okay, great. to Go ahead. the updates. Um, so we also have our um, SMS blog club, which is um, some students have uploaded um, their second Fibber Fact po po podcast, and it's and the and the title is um, "Our Keyboards Dirtier Than a Toilet Seat." And on this episode, you um, several staff and student guest stars um, answer the questions on there, and they have an Instagram account um, with staff with staff supervision, and um, they would like you to follow them. So um, they plan to post pictures and stories and even polls in order to involve the community and get the community and board member guest stars. Um, noticed and involved and um i we really encourage that you follow their account um so yeah well thank you for adding that olivia could you tell yeah. us what the uh where do we find it on instagram um oh okay so their um their account is called sms blog club and um it has um a falcon as their profile picture um so yeah, that's basically um, where you can find them. Livy, do you mind if I jump in and add a little bit to that quick? Oh yeah, you can. So yes, please follow us. It's SMS Blog Club. Um, there is a group of students who have been working diligently following their passion. It's quite incredible. They've actually taught me more than I have taught them. So we currently have like, I think it's like 67 followers. They check every day, but it's really, it's really interesting. They post polls. Um, they have guest stars. Their goal is to get followers so they can get guest stars actually from the community and pull them into their podcast, interview them. Um, we also have another ambitious, quite ambitious goal, but what are goals if they're not ambitious? And that's to reach a thousand followers. <laughs> so please spread the word. The reason for a thousand is once we get a thousand followers, if we get that number, you can swipe up and it'll directly take them to the podcast or to our blog articles. So it's going to be easier to access. You'll just be able to swipe up and listen to the podcast. So please spread the word SMS blog club. I promise we won't let you down. It's fun. Pictures, surveys, follow us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Mellis. Um, and uh, Meredith, back to you. Are you looking forward to the summer or would you rather stay in school? I'm definitely looking forward to it, but I feel like I've been home for a while. So it was nice to be back in school. So I guess a little bit of both. Like I'm excited, but I'm also going to miss school and miss seeing everybody every day. Yeah, I understand that. Well, any questions for either of the two seventh graders here? Okay, seeing none, thank you, Olivia Kud and Meredith Kelly. Have a good night and thank you, it was very informative. Okay, that takes us to Salisbury Elementary School. We have two third graders. The first one will be Lillian Pojanowski and the second one, Ryan Spizak. So we'll start with Lillian, please. Good evening, my name is Lillian Pujanowski. I'm a third grade student at Salisbury Elementary School. Here are some things that are happening in our school. Kindergarten regist 
registration is in process for the 2021 and 2022 school year. Information can be found on our website. Staff will be meeting with the incoming kindergartners in mid-June. Ms. Rooney, our, sec our school secretary, is in the process of scheduling appointments and assessments. We held outdoor learning session sessions in the week of April 19th in celebration mm -hmm. of Earth Day. We had a great weather we had great weather and all of the students enjoyed this activity. Different classes did various things. There are pictures posted on our website. Our yearbooks are now on sale, which includes student photos, all learning models, and candid pictures from this unusual and memorable year. They are on sale for $20 and can be ordered from Christmas City Studios. The deadline to order is May 15th. Thank you. Very good. Okay, that takes us to Ryan Spizak. He's up next. He's a third grade student, a fourth grade student, I'm sorry, at uh, Salisbury Elementary School. My name is Ryan and I'm a fourth grade student. The Girls in the Run program began on Wednesday, April 7th. Lessons teach the co connection between physical and emotional health. This is continuing twice a week and the girls love it. By the end of the program, participants will complete a 5K. May 4th and May 6th were our field days. Both days turned out to be beautiful weather and we were able to go outside and do fun activities. Our virtual and vast friends got to participate in the activities that they completed at home. On May 11th, fourth grade students traveled to SMS to tour the middle school building. We visited with our homeroom class one at a time, which was really nice. Virtual and vast students in the fourth grade will be touring the middle school tomorrow. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Ryan. Does anybody have any questions for either Lillian or Ryan? Okay, I don't see any. Are you, um, we'll start off with Lillian. Uh, are you looking forward to summer or would you rather say stay in school? Um, I'm looking forward to summer. <laughs> Great. I started looking forward to summer in September when I was in school. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay, and Ryan, how about you? I'm looking forward to summer because I'm actually quite interested in marine biology and usually go to a beach house. So. Oh, great. Oh, luck out there. <laughs> All right. Great job, guys. And um, have a good night. And I appreciate it. It was very informative. Thank you to all of our student reps. We appreciate your time and your willingness to share what you're proud of that's happening in your school. It gives us great insight into what is happening into each of our buildings. So thank you for being here and thank you for being leaders and sharing that and participating in this public speaking opportunity and board meeting. Nice job, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you. All right, thank you, Lynn. All right, we have no... Before we move on, Mr. Gatanis, I forgot to mention, if you'd like to make a comment, please add your name in the chat, as well as the address. You have two opportunities, um, section 1.8, citizens comments and inquiries pertaining to the agenda items. And then again, at section nine, uh, general comments and inquiries. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Uh, it takes us to special recognitions and presentations. It looks like we don't have any today, all right. And do we have any changes or additions to the agenda? Okay, it looks like we have none there. Okay, can I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay, any questions or comments concerning the agenda? Okay, seeing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. That takes us to 1.8 citizens inquiries and comments pertaining to agenda items. Mr. Taylor, do we have anybody that would like to speak? Uh, there's nobody signed up at this time. Okay, thank you. All right. Can I have a motion to approve the following minutes? The regular board meeting for April 14th and the operations committee meeting for May 5th. So moved. Can I have a-, a Second. Second. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? 
Seeing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, it takes us to payment of bills. All right, we have, um, we have the uh, general fund expenditures and total athletic expenditures, STSD laptop account and procurement card of 1.692, And we also have SFE nutritional services of $50,606.42. So um, can I have a motion to approve them? Second. Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay. Seeing none. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Ayes have it. Okay. That takes us to treasurer's reports. For uh, we have a treasurer's report for March of twenty one. Uh, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. moved. A second. Second. Okay, uh, any questions or comments? I have one question, um, George. Uh, the treasurer's report for the month of April, the food services fund. We had a big change from March to April in the balance, um, just about 200,000. Mr. Taylor, would you be able to share what that was? Sure, that's the, that was a couple of months of reimbursements from the federal government for our food service claims. Oh. Yep, so, okay. that, so we, we got, got with all at once. We got paid. We got paid by the federal government. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, Mary. Okay, um, with no other questions, um, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. All right, report to the secretary of the board. That's Mr. Taylor. Yes, uh, I just wanted to share one thing with the board real quick. Uh, if you remember a year ago at this time, we were talking about the board needing to borrow a tax revenue anticipation note with some concerns about the COVID impacts and potentially delays in receiving property tax revenue and everything. So the board did authorize the uh, potential borrowing of the tax revenue anticipation note. It was basically a line of credit that allowed the district to borrow up to 3.9 million to cover expenses for July and August. I'm happy to report that we drew very little on it. We only took an initial draw of $144,128 and we are paying that off on Friday. Um, so it was, an, it was good to have that as a contingency. Uh, our, our property tax uh, revenue came in uh, surprisingly well in July. That was not expected. Um, so I just wanted to inform the board that we did not have to borrow much at all from it, uh, but it was good to have as a contingency and that it's being paid off on Friday. Great. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Okay. Um... That takes us to committee reports. And the first one will be curriculum and technology by Mrs. Klinger. Good evening, everyone. And thanks for coming, uh, attending the meeting. Um, just a few things to go over, things that we had talked about at the April 26th curriculum and technology meeting. Uh, we talked about summer programming, the extended school year, we talked about the COVID compensatory services. We talked about the STEAM program that is going to be offered. We also talked about summer library hours and summer programming at SES. Um, we talked about the credit recovery in summer school at uh, Salisbury Middle School. I think for, that's a, for the high school. Uh, that's going to be virtual with uh, Kelly Weatherhold. We talked about um, some virtual access for the elementary students, applications that are available for them to access over the summer. And there will be a time when the, a staff member will check in with students. Um, we talked about the Summer English Institute through Lehigh University, which is a virtual 
program uh, the end of June to July 9th at the high school. We talked about the health and safety plan, summer programs. Uh, then we also talked about planning for next school year, the 21-22 school year, and a parent survey should have gone out to all the parents by May 1st uh, with a choice option of five days in school or vast. Um, we also talked about the up, updated guidance, CDC guidance uh, for COVID protocol. Um, oh, Tracy Jacoby had some special education updates with the continuum, continuum of services. We had a teaching and learning update. Kelly did that. And she also talked about, um, oh, and SMS also had some updates on highlights at the middle school. Uh, Kelly also talked about the assessments that are going on. I believe uh, there's some going on right now at the high school and PSSA starting next week uh, for the students. And she also talked about um, using some of the funds that um, from the government to look at our Storytown reading curriculum. And right now they are in the process of looking at several programs. I think when we spoke, the two programs that were in the running were Wit and Wisdom and the Wonders Program. And we talked about the Summer Academy professional development op options for our teachers. And we also talked about uh, the profile of a graduate. Did I miss anything, Kelly? <laughs> you did a great job, Carol. <laughs> we're, okay. we're actually looking at three programs. The other one is American Reading Com Company called Art Corps, but you did a great job, Carol. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Um, that was a lot, wasn't so, it, Carol? What? It's a lot. That was a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Um, our next meeting has been changed from the end of May to uh, we're going to have our next curriculum meeting on the 2nd of June following the OPS meeting. The OPS meeting is at 7 o'clock. And once that concludes, we will have our curriculum meeting. And with that, I would like to move items 2.1 to 2.4. 2.1 is um, we are going to have two um, Muhlenberg College students uh, with both in social studies, one with Katie Royer and one with Tanya Kennedy. 2.2 um, is a five-year Millersville affiliation agreement to place nursing students and we next August through December, we will have a nursing student with Lynn Welliver. Uh, 2.3 is we're approving the Seton Hall University Project Acceleration Program at the high school, which will run from uh, July 21 to 2022. And 2.4 is the Moravian College Dual Enrollment uh, Agreement which starts the 1st of July until the 30th of June, 22. So with that, may I have a second? Second. second. Anyone have any questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Klinger. Okay, that takes us to the operations committee. Uh, we had a meeting on May 5th and uh, we had uh, we had Chef Nico, Chef Nick, um, give us a presentation. Um, he explained to us everything that he has been doing, especially with the COVID situation. And it was very informative, and we can't thank him and SFE enough regarding uh, everything they do for this district. Uh, we also had Mrs. Mossman from uh, Coordinator of Human Services giving us a uh, rundown on a substitute service that we're uh, hoping to implement. 
which gives us a bigger pool of uh, substitute teachers and IAs uh, for the upcoming year. Um, Mr. Taylor gave us a rundown on the 21-22 proposed final budget, which we will be voting on tonight. So um, that uh, has already been uh, discussed and worked through for that uh, vote that's gonna be taking place tonight. And with that, we will be having our next meeting on June, Wednesday, June 2nd. So uh, with that, I'd like to uh, go over the items that we're gonna be doing tonight. Uh, as I said before, we're gonna be voting on the proposed final budget. Um, is there anything, Mike, that you'd like to uh, talk about before we move on? Sorry, how's on mute? No problem. No problem. <laughs> Going back to last week with um, with uh, some of the updates in the budget and uh, some of the allocation of some of the grant funds we are expending with the proposed final budget, we would have a, a balanced budget uh, with the with the millage rate being twenty one point one two five nine mills, and the average tax increase for the median assessed valued home is about one hundred eight dollars, um, and that's that's where it stands tonight with the proposed final budget. Okay, thank you, Mike. Okay, uh, that takes us to with the board treasurer appointment and the board secretary appointment. Do we have to have a roll call vote for those two? Uh, I don't believe so, no. Okay, all right, so that would be item 3.2 board treasurer. That would be reappointing Mary Ziegler as treasurer of the board, and uh, that would appoint uh, Mr. Taylor as board secretary. We have a full, a fuel bid. Um, uh, uh, line item uh, 3.4 that we'd like to approve. And um, we have electronic signature resolution that will allow uh, our superintendent to sign, uh, sign uh, documents remotely on an electronic basis. And we have uh, 3.6 use of district facilities. It's always nice and I'm thrilled to be able to offer uh, Salisbury School District uh, facilities for SYA, which will continue happening. So um, with that, I'd like to move items 3.1 through 3.6 for George, approval. George, you may want to do the budget as a roll call. Okay, the budget you want as a roll call then. Okay, all right. So let me move items 3.2 through 3.5. And can I have a second on those items? Second. Okay. Any questions or comments regarding those items? George, you said okay. 3.5. Did you mean 3.6? 3.6. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, three point, that would be 3.2 through 3.6. And um, uh, with that, uh, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, that takes us back to the proposed final budget. Um, Mike already explained a little bit further regarding that. So we will have to go through a roll call vote with that. Mr. Taylor, would you be kind enough to go through the roll call with that? Yep, Mr. DeFrank. Yes. Ms. Frick. Yes. Ms. Glenister. Yes. Mr. Ganahl. Yes. Mr. Hattinger. Yes. Ms. Klinger. Yes. Ms. Nemitz. Yes. Ms. Ziegler. Yes. And Mr. Gutanis. Yes. And the uh, motion passes. Great. Thank you, everybody. Okay, that takes us to the personnel committee. Mrs. Ziegler. Thank you. You're we welcome. Have we have several different items tonight that I'll be moving for your approval. Um, we have a resignation for a uh, building substitute. We also have a retirement in our business office with Mrs. Parlow from our accounts payable admin assistant. Um, tonight on the agenda, you will also see a contract renewal for our chief financial officer and board secretary, uh, Mr. Taylor. We do have somebody coming back from an FMLA. Um, we also have some other uh, contracts um, that we have taken care of. We have uh, the confidential support staff agreement 
for your approval tonight, I also um, presenting a memorandum of understanding, and this is between the district and the um, support uh, association for um, utility maintenance custodians and the assistant to the maintenance director um, if they have job duties that are outside of their scheduled workday. We have a sabbatical extended. We also have some employment for um, ESY instructors, uh, which is the extended school year, uh, COVID-19 compensatory services instructors, and we also have an employment of a ESY a home instructor. We also have game worker uh, employment. So hopefully uh, when we're going back into the stadiums, they'll be, there's somebody there. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, the change as always, we have uh, substitute additions and deletions as a regular part of our board uh, agenda. So it's rather small tonight uh, for personnel items. So I'd like to move for your approval 4.1 through 4.13. Okay, yeah. can we have a second on that? Second. second. Okay, any questions for Mary concerning these items? Seeing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Thank you, Mrs. Ziegler. Okay. Uh, Policy committee, Audrey, do we have any policy items to go over? We don't have any policies to review this month, George. Okay, great, thank you. All right, and we have no student activities report. Um, that takes us to Lehigh uh, Intermediate Unit, Mrs. Ziegler. Thank you. You're welcome. So again, tonight I have a couple items for your review, but I'll share what happened at our um, April 19th board meeting. We had a presentation for um, the services for the deaf and hard of hearing, interpretation, audiology, and vision folks. Uh, shared all the tools and uh, services that are provided for students um, that are in need of those services. We also uh, confirmed the 20. 122 calendars and schedule for board meetings and the office schedule. Um, in addition, we received our um, district student count for services. We currently have 130 students receiving services for the IU. Um, the highest one is 84 students with occupational therapy. And then we have um, IA support for LCTI. We have um, one, two, three services uh, that service 15 students between speech and language and adapt, uh, adapted phys ed and physical therapy. We have eight students being serviced for the work-based learning and two students for vision and orientation and mobility services. Uh, one other thing, you should have um, received a CLIU ballot. Those need to be completed and, and uh, sent in for uh, the CLIU board of directors. And that's all I have from the board meeting. So for your approval tonight, I have item 7.2, which is the Tech Ed Legal Pool Council Consortium for 21-22, and 7.3, which is the um, overdrive agreement with um, the IU in the amount of $2,000 for 21-22, and the overdrive um, school is the, it's the download library um, for our use for the period of one year. So um, I will go back here so I can tell you it's item 7. Point, I'd like to move to item 7.2 and 7.3 for your approval tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I have a second? Second. 
Okay. Any questions for Mary? Okay. Seeing none. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Okay. That takes us to L Tri C, Mr. DeFrank. Thank you, Mr. Katanis. Uh, we had our board meeting uh, last Thursday, May 6th. At this meeting, uh, we had a presentation from Dr. Collins on our Title III grant uh, that we receive, received for $2.5 million. And over the next five years, we'll be sending those funds on a program called Pathways to Success for All Students, which was very impressive. It, this involves direct student report uh, for helping with our career readiness, uh, focus on mathematics and applying them to the right program for their careers, professional development for adjuncts and developing an adjunct academy, and data management and network infrastructure, identifying the students that are on the right path, identifying their, their grades at each level as they go through, and setting them up for readiness. So there has been a total focus on preparing our students for their careers and making sure they're on their pathways. Now, uh, feedback from the, we've had this uh, for a year, this is our second year with this, and we have seen that in this first semester, we have ha actually seen success by having uh, the highest level of enrollment of one class to the next and readiness for preparation that we've ever had. So we feel very excited about this program and that it's gonna be a key path to make sure our students not only attend college, but graduate from college and graduate with a career that they can move on to and make sure they're prepared for that and taking the right courses and getting the right support and helping them to prepare because not every student comes in with the same level of preparedness and making sure we understand what those needs are and make sure they get this uh, support. So I was very happy to see that program and see how that is working for the school. We also uh, reviewed uh, and had an executive session for the president's uh, review for the year. And we also did discuss a fall retreat. And also uh, tonight, I'd like to wish all the students of Salisbury well who are graduating from El tri -C, their graduation this evening, which I'm not attending due to the conflict of attending this meeting tonight. So I do wish them well. And that is my report. All right, thank you, Mr. Frank. Okay, that takes us to LCTI, Sarah Nemitz. Okay, um, I just have a couple items tonight. Um, students are back at LCTI four days a week and it's going well. Lunch, of course, was the main obstacle in getting the students for back, back for four days a week, but um, they've sort of rearranged the cafeterias to fit um, a few more students in for each lunch period. So that's been going very well. Um, applications for next fall are down slightly from where they were last year, um, despite a robust recruiting schedule this uh, school year. So, you know, I encourage any students who might still be interested in LCTI for the fall to talk with their guidance counselor and see if they can still submit an application. Um, LCTI is holding Camp LCTI again this year. It was obviously skipped last year, but Camp LCTI is for um, students in fifth through eighth grades. Um, they choose four different program areas. There's uh, 14 program areas being offered this year. Um, so they get to sample four different program areas throughout the week. And that's taking place June 21st through the 25th. The link for Camp LCTI is right on the LCTI homepage. So if you're interested, definitely go check it out. And um, the senior night celebration is going to be held virtually on May 27th. And one thing new for this year is that um, one JOC member from each uh, participating district got to record a little congratulations message. Um, I recorded mine yesterday and took the Falcon with me to take part in that message. So I'd like to give a big public thank you to Salisbury parent and LCTI employee Marcy Stapung for uh, parading around her place of employment as the Falcon for a few hours. We popped into some student labs and uh, took some pictures with the executive director and a couple other people and um, it was a lot of fun. So that wraps up my report for this month. Great, thank you, sir. Okay, that takes us to PSBA Legislative Policy Council. Audrey Frick, 
or Becky Glenister, do you have anything to report? Um, yes, George, it's my turn to report. And um, this, this past month, I've been following um, several different Senate or House bills, including probably uh, the most interesting one in my mind, the Charter School Reform Bill. It creates, it, the whole bill was created to address the cyber tuition rates and tiered special ed funding that could save taxpayers a lot of dollars. There is a virtual rally going on so that you can help help communicate to your state senator um, on the 25th of May at 9.30. So I know I'll be working at that time, but um, it would be kind of fun to watch that virtual rally. And then um, the Senate Education Committee, it continued a series of hearings on needed K through 12 reforms. These reforms included specific recommendations such as charter school funding reform, reform of advertisement and public notice requirements, um, uh, reform policy uh, fostering community schools. And um, also I'm following another house bill that would establish, I thought this one was interesting, that would establish a career and technical education investment program, including tax, tax credits to businesses that contribute to career and technical programs. So I always find uh, Sarah's report quite interesting and I think LCTI is such a great program, but I think that you know, if having a funding investment program like that for really partnering businesses would be terrific. And that's um, what I have for today, George. I'm gonna cut in right there. Um, yeah, I think, I, I mean, LCTI could not exist without the partnerships that it has out in the community. And I think one thing to note, sort of tangentially re uh, related, is that, you know, throughout these rounds of federal funding during the pandemic, career and technical education schools have been excluded from those. So, um, you know, anything that we can do to help support career and tech technical education um, would be a huge benefit. Yeah, agreed. Great. Okay, thank you, Audrey and Sarah. George, okay. George, I'd like to make a comment. Sure. So regarding legislative, I happened to walk in the, my home the other night from work and I flipped on, Sarah's laughing. I flipped on the news and there in front of me on the TV screen is Sarah <laughs> at a news conference. So Sarah, would you mind sharing in case the rest of the board and public didn't get to see you live on your 20 seconds of fame? I would love to. This all happened very, very quickly. So I was asked on Monday of last week to, to participate in a press conference on Thursday. Um, the press conference was put together by the Education Voters of Pennsylvania. They organized six of these across the state to happen on the same day to um, encourage legislators to consider education issues when it came to vote for um, the upcoming state budget. Um, I took part in this press conference with uh, Dr. Joseph Roy, who's the superintendent of the Bethlehem School District, uh, Karen Beck Pooley, who's on their board of directors, Nancy Wilt, who's the president of the Allentown um, School Board, and Jessica, I'm blanking on her last name, from ARC of Northampton and Lehigh County. So we were asked just to come there and, you know, just share like one to two minutes on what these funding issues mean for us. Um, it was a really powerful event. Um, I, I know the other districts got, uh, Lynn is nodding because she watched it live stream. Um, and I can actually, you know, we can share, I'll share the live stream link with all of you, but um, it was a really incredible event. And it, you know, we had no coordination beforehand of what our messages were, but we all sort of hit on different aspects of the school funding issue when it comes to funding from the state. So um, I'd like to thank George and Lynn and Mike for their you know, endorsement of me participating in this event and the information sharing that they did you know, literally the day before. Um, it all sort of came together at the last minute. Um, I had met Sandra Miller from the Saucon Valley School District through the Advocacy Day events, and she's the one who recommended me 
to participate in this event. So that's cool. the, the, sh the short story. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. It was just surprising. I was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that's <crazy laughs> on there. I had a super crazy week last week, like all good things, but you know, there was, was, a, it yeah. was a good message. So it was a surprise, but it was, it was a really, it, it was a great experience. And like I said, a really powerful event to be part of. Well, thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Okay. Mrs. Roddick, do we have any uh, report being our solicitor? Christine, you're muted. Christine. Yeah, okay, sorry, go. I apologize. Thanks. I was having some technical difficulty there with my mouse, but um, I said, I have no report. I, I certainly can't follow up um, on Ms. Nemitz's report. That was kind of exciting, so. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Christine, for all you do. And uh, for those of you who don't know it, Christine uh, is from King Spry Law Firm in Bethlehem, and she's always been uh, a real benefit to this district. And thank you again, Christine and John. Okay, that takes us to the leadership team report, Ms. Feeney Henton. All right, good evening, everyone. Just a couple of items here tonight. So I will share my screen and you should be seeing that now. So very quickly, first of all, I'd like to congratulate our t-shirt design contest winner. First place winner is, went to Lawrence uh, Trin at the high school. He designed that uh, great Falcon Strong, Salisbury Strong Falcon Proud logo there. And all of our staff members and faculty celebrated with the uh, Salisbury Strong Day today. Um, recognizing staff and appreciating the work that staff has done to help um, partner with families and board members and um, leaders and uh, teachers, instructional assistants, custodial staff, everybody who has contributed this year and um, worked to create our program for our learners um, this year through COVID. We also had two students that we recognized as runners up, Caden Amarim, and there's Caden's uh, design. He went with a proud Falcon logo, as well as Samantha Conrad, who memorialized the year uh, with a Falcon carrying a mask, as well as the date. So congratulations to all three of our students, very creative artists, and we are featuring their designs in a school store. We sent this out in Thrill Share for our families. So if you'd like to order uh, a blue short sleeve, long sleeve, or hoodie, and you can choose any one of those three designs um, that's available in the store online for anyone in the school community to order those designs. So thank you to our student artist. We had quite a few entries, so it was tough to decide, um, which is one of the reasons we ended up going with three designs. So thrilled to be able to offer that and celebrate our students' talents. Also today is National School Nurse Day and we do have some school nurses we'd like to recognize. Our nurses have been you know, excellent partners this year. There's been a lot of additional challenges due to COVID. So we appreciate their efforts working with us in um, procedures and contact tracing and quarantining, um, you know, speaking with parents and students. So Mrs. Tripp, Mrs. Lynn Welliver, Mrs. Joanne Marzola, Mrs. Sarah Angiri, Ms. Michelle Peters, and Ms. Latasha Snyder. So thank you to all of our school nurses. I wanna share uh, something that came out yesterday, information about an FCC broadband benefit. This is available to um, families, uh, specifically household families who qualify under specific conditions related to income and um, free and reduced lunch. There are eligibility criteria for families and there is information about how to A, determine if you qualify and B, access the services, which could be a discount of up to $50 per month for broadband services. Um, so this information, we'll send this out via Thrillshare so that our families have all the information, but it looks like it may help to um, support some of our families. 
All right, and just one more slide here, I think I missed. <clears throat> Sorry about that. There we go. I want to share our declaration of intent results with uh, the board as well as our community. So if you remember, Mrs. Klinger mentioned we surveyed our families and we offered uh, the instructional model before our, our governor's information came out. We said we're really going to work towards five days a week and we're going to reduce that distance. Um, the only variable we're not sure about yet is whether or not we're required to um, have the six feet when when eating. And then the second thing is we're not sure where we'll be with the masks, um, but we'll follow the governor's requirements at that time. So here's some data from SES. There were 437 responses so far. 95% of the students have indicated they'll be returning back to our buildings uh, for five days of face-to-face -face instruction. At the middle school, there were 403 responses, 98% re responded uh, that they'll be returning back to the building for five days of face-to-face -face instruction. And then finally at Salisbury High School, we have 450 responses with almost 96% of the learners indicating they're coming back uh, for the full five days of face-to-face -face instruction. So wanted to provide you with that update, share that information. Our building leaders are still working um, along with uh, colleagues in the building to reach out to families who have not yet responded because we really do still need that information so that we can um, best plan for the fall. And that is my report. Thank you, Ms. Feeney Hutton. You're welcome. Okay, that takes us to any new business from the board. Mr. Gutanis, I would like to share something. I've been going into the elementary school the past couple of weeks, um, once, a, once a week and reading to uh, the students. And I have to tell you, the kids are so resilient and have bounded right back to their normal routine. To them, it just seems like normal. I don't have, I don't hear anything about reminders continuously about put your mask on or or stay separated. It's like automatic. These these children and and Mr. Bram, you need to share that with uh, your staff for me. Kudos to them. I have, I've read to the uh, uh, virtual class as well. Um, I've been doing Zooms with the reading to some of them and in person with reading to them. And these kids are just so terrific and, and have adapted so well. I happened to be there reading uh, one of them. It was snack time. And it was it was like they, they stayed put, their mask was down, they would eat. And it was just automatic. They got up, put their mask up, took their trash. These kids are awesome. And the teachers are doing such a great job. And I have to share the use of the document reader I'm not sure how they functioned without these prior, if all of them didn't have them. They are so cool because I was always taking a book. Matter of fact, here's one of them that I'm reading to fourth grade, Magic Treehouse. I take the book and then I'm kind of like reading sideways to show picture or upside down to read. This was so neat to be able to set the book down and this document reader is projecting it on a big screen and they could all see um, at the same time because we're not in the normal world. Normally I'd be in the chair and these students would all be sitting in front of me in a circle on the floor or something. And the uh, adaptive process that these teachers and kids are doing, they're just terrific. And it was really nice. A lot of the kids, um, when I started walking in, they I know you, I know you, you're Mrs. Your misses, and then they needed some hints, but um, they're they're so welcoming, and it's it's been great to uh, to be back in there and reading to them again. So uh, please share my uh, congratulations to your staff and to the students of a great job they're doing. I will. Thank you for that feedback. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Um, any other new business? 
Okay, seeing none, that takes us to citizens inquiries and comments. Do we have anybody who'd like to speak, Mr. Taylor? Yeah, at this time we have one signed up, uh, Mr. Russell Landy, and uh, he should be able to speak now. Good evening, Salisbury Township School Board members. I'm Russell Landy and I reside on Ellsworth Street in the township for 21 years. My daughter is a student in the district. As members of the Salisbury Township School Board, your ultimate responsibilities include representing the constituency. The constituency is defined as a member of the voting block, which is exclusive to the taxpayers and members of the Salisbury Township community. We, the members of the community, expect the members of the Salisbury Township School Board to make decisions that represent our wishes and those that have the best interest of our children in mind. Now, sometimes a member of the school board might indirectly benefit from those decisions in a purely coincidental way, such as if they had a child that attends Salisbury schools, but if a member responds to discussions in school board meetings by stating, I personally believe, or I personally feel, well, then it might lead the interpretation as whether those decisions are in the interest of the constituency or that of the individual board member. So if the school board member states at a meeting, which is what happened at the last meeting, then they have been a member of the school board for 10 years. Then I and we would interpret that, that the board member then is also accepting responsibilities for decisions and outcomes of those decisions made for 10 years to include the financial and things related to the financial decisions, how the students are educated within the district, the debt which was incurred by the school board's decisions and the consequences of those financial decisions that caused the closure of Western. Decisions were made to close all the schools during COVID and go virtual until almost February. While many other surrounding school districts were in person, face-to-face -face five days a week, they were following CDC guidelines while having no need to go virtual for any significant period of time. And that leads to question as to whether or not this whole virtual was even necessary. If space was an excuse to close the district during most of the school year, well then if Western would not have been closed, well that might've provided a significant space we needed to allow the schools to have remained open. This school district and the school board members chose to close the schools and go virtual. We have learned that this was not only a very unpopular decision, but one that did not represent a majority of the wishes of the constituency. These closures have been said to cause substantial economic hardships in terms of lost wages by families, having to stay home with children, sacrifices, and untold hardships. So the decisions that created the debt, which in turn caused the decision to close Western, did not fall in line with the majority of the members of the constituency being us. Had Western remained open, this might be a far different discussion, which we all would probably agree. When a board member states that they have been a member of the board for 10 years, then these decisions fall on your lap. Then you take responsibility. According to the surveys that were conducted in the past and revealed at the school board meeting late last year, a majority of parents wanted the schools reopened and wanted that since the beginning of the school year. But we didn't know that until all the surveys came out. The minority of parents who did not want to go face to face were provided alternatives. Now, I'm not trying to take anything away from those parents who agreed with the virtual format and the hardships and sacrifices that were not unendurable. I respect them and I appreciate their decisions, but I am referring to the majority of parents who didn't want Western closed and did not want the COVID closures when there were better alternatives. The majority of the constituency that were harmed and suffered loss and endured great sacrifice as a result of the decisions of this board, that the decisions this board made and has made, it should be heard. The school district chose to utilize cyber school formats for virtual options when in fact, other districts were devoting one teacher per grade to go virtual instruction, which was very successful in those districts. Instead of the $1 million it was gonna to cost to do 
the cyber school. The constituency wanted the school wanted the schools open in some capacity, and this didn't even happen until February, which does not seem to be representing the parents and the constituency. So why is this an issue now? Well, when a school board member, for example, states publicly or has it written, I will continue listening. And yet all these decisions that have been made by the board seem to contradict this attitude that the board members are listening to the will of the constituency. So then it can be said that members of the board might be hearing what is being said when these surveys are conducted and you see the chat that we had at the one meeting, but hearing is quite different than listening. There is quite a difference between when a person is listening and when a person is hearing what is being said. So now here we are at a crossroads. We have an election. And when four school board members are on the ballot, we the parents, we the taxpayers, and we the members of the community now have to make some important decisions. Do we maintain the status quo? All the people I see on this screen right now, do we continue as we're going? maintain the current board, or do we make decisions that we should make potentially some changes? So in other words, as the old saying goes, if you always do what you've always done, then you'll always get what you always got. So that basically means if you change nothing, then nothing will change. Incurring debt that ultimately caused the closure of the school, keeping the district closed and going virtual for a substantial portion of the school year, closing a school down, the decision to retain the school board and maintain the status quo, however, are in our hands, the hands of the constituents. The decisions made by this board in the past have caused, det has caused detrimental effects to every member of this community. And as I had stated in the very beginning of this COVID pandemic and of these discussions that we've had and those decisions that the board makes will have effects on students for years to come. This affected the teachers, the administration, the students, the families, and turned the entire school district upside down. And quite frankly, I'm very angry. I'm mad about how this has played out. To this date, I have not heard one member of this board publicly apologize for any of these hardships, for closing Western, for creating the debt made by bad decisions, and for what we have all had to endure by this board's decisions. Not an apology of any kind. And this makes me mad. And this has driven me to speak out right now. I'm speaking out and I'm telling the board that I find it condescending to say the least that no one can apologize and accept responsibility for any of this. That makes me angry. I am no longer going to sit back and stay idle when members of this board are stating that they will continue to listen to the constituency when this is not the case. We want an apology and we want the board to accept responsibility for bad decisions. We want the board to acknowledge the suffering, the sacrifice and the loss that our children and our community has endured based upon this board's decisions. Please, Stop telling us how long you've been a member of the board, that you'll continue to keep listening, that the board has always been transparent, like the budget tonight. I don't know if there's gonna be a tax increase. I don't even know where to find the budget. There should be a link somewhere, I guess. But this transparency and, and saying that we've been true, the board has been truthful, I don't know if that's the case anymore. And lastly, the last board meeting, not only did a board member make it a point again, to remind the constituency that he has been a member of this board for over 10 years, but there was an inference, an inference that those choosing to run for office and replace some of the board members should be cognizant that there are meetings that they'll have to attend several times a month. I would think that's not to discourage residents from running for the school board, but again, an unnecessary at its best thing to mention. Thank you and good evening. Mr. Landy, I'd just like to respond to some of the comments that you made. Um, have we made all the right decisions? No, but we make decisions based on the situation we have at the time. And uh, as far as transparency goes, we couldn't be more transparent, Mr. Landy, uh, because if we're any less transparent, 
we aren't legally allowed to do anything more or less than what we presented to the public. And whenever we make a decision, we try including the public, whether it's people that want Western open or people that don't want Western open. All we could go with is the information we have at the time and we are not being dishonest. Are we perfect? No. And that's what the capitalistic system is all about. You know, uh, there are going to be other people voting. And if I don't make it, I'm going to be rooting for those new people if I get voted out. And, you know, I have nothing more to say other than the fact that I try my best, the entire board tries their best. And all we could go with is the, the information we have at hand at that particular time. And um, uh, that's all I've got to say, but um, you're, we're willing to listen to you and we do listen to you, but we also listen to all the other people in this community, not only the ones that zoom in, we have to listen to everybody. And that's what I really think we've been doing. And, um, and like I said, if I get voted out or others get voted out, I'm gonna be rooting for whoever the new board members are. I'm gonna be encouraging them and I'm gonna be stand behind them whether I'm on the board or not. So that's all I've got to say regarding that. Hey, George, okay. I wanna add something. I think some people have maybe missed some of our prior meetings. So I just wanna share something real quick uh, so that everybody has the information that's out there. Um, I'm gonna share um, just a couple slides real quick from uh, last week's meeting that was that must, might have been missed. So if we see here the 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 timeline, uh, if everybody can see my screen, uh, May twelfth, which is tonight, is the adoption of the proposed final budget, which isn't the actual final budget. The final budget will be voted on June sixteenth, uh, but May twenty seventh, the proposed final budget will be available by June by by May, by May twenty seventh. The final budget will be available for review by the pub by the public on our website and also in person at the administration building. So that's the timeline. And then as far as the uh, tax increase, it's what we've been discussing for a couple months now that the Act 1 index allows a 3% uh, tax increase. Uh, and that's what is getting us to the zero uh, balanced budget. And uh, I mentioned it earlier tonight that the median residential assessed value would have, home would have a, a tax increase at that point of $108.54. So I, I think you know some people might not have seen some of these prior meetings, but just wanted to share that so that uh, everybody is aware of that tax increase and the timeline. Hopefully that helps answer questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Do we have anybody else? Uh, at this time, there is nobody else signed up to, to speak. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, that takes us to upcoming meetings. We have a curriculum and technology meeting on June 2nd after the operations meeting. And of course, the operations meetings the same day at seven o'clock. Uh, we have executive session on June 16th at 6.30. And we have a regular board meeting on June 16th at 7.30. And we have an executive session July 14th at 6.30. And that's if needed. And we have a regular board meeting July 14th uh, at 7.30 if needed. So, uh, I want to thank everybody for attending, uh, board members, administrative staff, and the community, and um, have a good week. And uh, Lynn, would you like to bring, uh, like to say anything regarding the closing of our meeting? Just a quick thank you to all of our attendees and also uh, the students who um, participated tonight and shared their uh, reports. It's great to hear from them. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good night, everybody. Night, Take everyone. care, everyone. Night.